This is Socotra, a small mountainous island located off the Horn of Africa in the Arabian Sea. Today, this inconspicuous piece of our globe basically belongs to no one. Some people really want the world to forget about this island, at least for a while. It is located in the immediate vicinity of the Bab al-Mandab Strait, meaning Gate of Tears. About 12% of world trade and 30% of container trade passes through it, and it is here that oil from the Arabian Peninsula to Europe and the United States is transported. In addition, of course, there is Chinese freight. On the morning of June 21st, 2020, something happened in Socotra that now shapes the fate of this island. Celebrating their new military gain, forces loyal to the self-styled Southern Transitional Council or STC took full control of Socotra. UAE-backed STC separatists forcibly took control of Socotra and drove out Saudi-backed pro-Hadi forces while ending de facto Yemeni influence on the island. Initially, the plan was for separatists to take power, but the United Arab Emirates went a step further. What you see are satellite images provided by Planet Labs via the Associated Press. They were taken on March 26th, 2024. They show the just-built runway, which is almost three kilometers long. A runway this length can accommodate attack, surveillance and transport aircraft, and even some of the heaviest bombers. No country admits to this construction and all this in a place where some of the rarest biological specimens on our planet occur. So let's check what is happening on this mysterious island and why it is so important globally. In the 1990s, a team of United Nations biologists conducted a study of the flora and fauna of the archipelago. They counted almost 700 endemic species that do not occur anywhere else on Earth. Known for its unique and abundant wildlife, Socotra was believed to be the original location of the Garden of Eden. The archipelago has been designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site to protect an island considered one of the most biologically diverse and iconic islands in the world. Naturalists and ecologists estimate that 37% of the 825 plant species, 90% of reptiles and 95% of land snails are found nowhere else in the world. The most characteristic element of the landscape is the so-called dragon dracaena, from which a red resin called dragon's blood was once extracted. It was the main export of the islanders. More than 42 uh, breeding birds in the Sotra archipelago. Uh, we have more than 11 bird and the culture and its ecology are unique. They've developed in near isolation from mainland Yemen over the centuries. But this is a poor island in a poor country. And the arrival here of rich donor nations is prompting some people to question whether their island is being subtly colonized. Uh, the big things, it's challenger here, it's the people. It comes from outside. And we are really afraid about we lost our traditional things. The archipelago was once part of the supercontinent Gondwana and was separated in the Miocene epoch. As a result, its flora developed in isolation and the species found there resemble those that existed on Earth several million years ago. I probably don't have to explain to you how great tourist potential these islands have. By the way, there are tourist trips there which, interestingly, are organized by travel agencies in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. The tourism is improve the local people the shops and supermarket, the local guide, the owner of the camels. Also, we hope they are coming more and more to benefit for all people. Also, although in theory Socotra belongs to Yemen and is currently in the hands of separatists, in reality the power there is held by the United Arab Emirates. However, they are not the only ones who have influence on the island, but we will come back to this later. Due to its strategic location between the navigable waterways of the Persian Gulf, Africa and Asia, the archipelago is becoming more and more interesting for the hegemons of modern times. 
It can provide potential support for shipping, logistics and defense or military projection. The achievement of the UAE's geostrategic goals can be enabled by exploiting this area while countering the goals of competitors and adversaries. The island is inhabited by 60,000 people, half of them Shiites, half of them Sunni. The local language of Sokotria is older than Arabic, its origin is still unknown. Sokotra hides many secrets and so far due to political turmoil, it has not been properly investigated. In 1995, despite a history of unsuccessful hydrocarbon exploration in the area, British gas exploration and production determined that the Kishan field may contain significant amounts of crude oil, which extends off the coast of the island, perhaps even to mainland Yemen, but these explorations were abandoned due to the current instability. The war in Yemen, which controls Socotra only on paper, has been going on since 2014, when Houthi rebels, supported by forces loyal to former President Ali Abdullah Saleh, occupied Yemen's capital, Sana'a, and other areas of the country. While Socotra was only slightly affected, radicalization occurred after a series of cyclones, Chapala and Meg in 2015, and Mekunu in 2018, wreaking havoc on the island's infrastructure and nature. In response, the Emiratis rebuilt mosques, created a water supply network and founded the city of Sheikh Zayed with educational and health facilities. They also rebuilt the port of Hadibo and the airport, which today looks exactly as you see. There's only one check-in line, so it does take a while to get processed. Understandable if there's only one to two flights per week at this airport. Then you go to this waiting area that actually has a couple of amenities. Swing by the one souvenir shop to get any last minute gifts or memories. There is a small cafe that sells pre-made sandwiches and sodas and a tiny bathroom that isn't the cleanest. You'll go through one final security screen and passport check before being allowed on the tarmac to board the plane. Regularly arriving planes carrying humanitarian aid from the Emirates has become a fact. The capital of Hadibu does not look too spectacular, but the influence of Abu Dhabi and Dubai can be seen at every step, especially at checkpoints and government institutions of the islanders. In her analysis, journalist Eleonora Ardemani from the organization New Conflicts, senior researcher at ISP on theconversation.com, described exactly what the UAE's military presence on the island looks like. The deployment of Emirati troops and armored vehicles to Socotra in 2018 was a watershed moment for Socotra. The implementation took place without coordination with local authorities still loyal to the internationally recognized government. According to officials, the United Arab Emirates sent troops to support the people of Socotra with stability, health care, education and living conditions. And if we consider the strategy that the United Arab Emirates have driven in Yemen over the past three years actually, we see that there is a pattern evolving which doesn't necessarily directly uh, concern fighting the Houthis or reinstating the Hadi government, as it was said in 2015 when the coalition started. But it's more about securing Emirati interests in the south of Yemen, access to the Indian Ocean, access to the Bab al-Mandab, uh, the occupation of Aden through proxy forces uh, against actually forces from the Hadi government. And now more recently we've seen this occupation or almost annexation of Socotra Island again against the Hadi government. The inhabitants of the island are aware of their cultural differences and at the same time they are very interested in politics. Although the island is backward, it has access to the internet and electricity. This means that the locals have been seriously considering separating the island to create an independent country for the last 10 years. Hence they are quite reluctant towards foreign governments, both those from Yemen's Sana'a and those from Abu Dhabi. For some time due to the rebellion, the Emirati troops were even forced to withdraw most of their equipment from Socotra. But in 2019, as part of the action of the STC separatists, the Emirates again strengthened their presence on the island. In 2020, the governor of Socotra opposed the formation of local pro-Emirate forces, which led to the opposition of the already strengthened STC, which eventually took control of the island. This was a de facto coup by the STC that allowed the Emirates to indirectly control the island, with the salaries of Socotran officials according to newspapers and independent reports reportedly being paid by the United Arab Emirates and a local Coast Guard unit pledging allegiance to the UAE. Now that the separatists have captured Socotra, they are likely to turn their attention to the provinces of Shabwa, Hadramaut and Al Mahra, the last areas in the south under the control of Hadi's loyalists. Socotra's affiliation to Yemen is a fiction, considering what is happening on the continent. It is possible that the region will become a new country or area of influence of the rich Arab world. 
A 2021 AFP report also described how STC banners are dwarfed by much larger Emirati flags flying at police checkpoints, while newly erected communications masts connect phones directly to UAE networks rather than Yemen. Let's add to this there are weekly flights from Abu Dhabi and occasional flights from Dubai, and the fact that one of the carriers operating the flights is Emirates. I guess it is unnecessary to explain this phenomenon further. The icing on the cake was the last segment of the film specifically reports and satellite photos about the bases being built there, but also the influence of Israel and the United States, which is to cooperate with the Emirates in this regard. We're here this afternoon to change the course of history. After decades of division and conflict, we mark the dawn of a new Middle East. Three months after the occupation of Socotra by United Arab Emirates troops, the highly controversial Abraham Accords were signed in Washington between Israel and the UAE as well as Bahrain, Morocco, and Sudan. On the Arab side, the normalization trend was led by Abu Dhabi, which quickly began to expand its diplomatic, military, and economic ties with Tel Aviv. This peace accord, which is a historic achievement for the United States of America, the State of Israel, and the United Arab Emirates, will continue to have a positive impact, as we believe that its reverberations will be reflect reflected on the entire region. This new vision, which is beginning to take shape as we meet today for the future of the region full of youthful energy, is not a slogan that we raise for political gain, as everyone looks forward to creating a more stable, prosperous, and secure future. Shortly after the signing of the Abraham Accords, reports and photos of Israeli tourists visiting Sokotra began to appear. However, according to Al-Mayadeen's report, the Israeli guests were not tourists, but rather military experts. During the 1973 Arab-Israeli War, Yemen, in cooperation with Egypt, blocked the passage of Israeli ships and tankers from accessing the strategic strait, leading to disastrous consequences for Israel. Therefore, Israel wants to be able to control the Bab al-Mandab Strait at all costs, and this will be possible by having influence in Sokotra. Again, the United Arab Emirates and the United States are terrified of the growing power of Iran, whose influence is visible throughout the Middle East, including Yemen. Abu Dhabi has calculated that it can benefit from Israel's intelligence network and early warning systems. And Iran's recent drone attack on Israel has demonstrated the country's real defense capabilities based on the technologies it has. Hence, allowing Israel to enter Sokotra offers mutual benefits. The inhabitants of Sokotra themselves, long before the agreement between the UAE and Israel, were supposed to receive Emirati passports in 2018 as part of the arrival of the then general Khalfan al Masrueh. Historically, Sokotra has more in common with the Emirates than you might think. UAE merchants actively participated in this trade, exporting goods such as dates, pearls and fabrics to Sokotora, and in return importing frankincense, myrrh and other valuable goods such as the previously mentioned resin. Trade flourished in the 1960s and in the Emirates alone even several tens of thousands of Arabs indicate Sokotra as their country of origin. Hence, keeping these facts in mind, it is highly probable that Sokotra will cease to be an integral part of Yemen. The current steps on the part of the Emirates resemble modern colonization, but from a point. From the perspective of Sokotra, which de facto does not have a strong leader, such stabilization actions may make sense. The inscription, I love the United Arab Emirates in the desert, at the recently built military base on the island of Abd al-Quri, is partly further proof that plans for this island may go far beyond today's perception, because few people are aware of how crucial this area is. That's all for me for today. Thank you for your attention, and until the next video, take care, bye.